Hi, right, welcome back. Today we're going to be changing the oil on this uh, 2004 Toyota Sienna. It has 172,000 miles on it and I've changed the oil probably a little over 25 times. So we bought it used, um, but now it's time to change the oil. So enjoy. Okay, before I crawl underneath my vehicle, um, kind of show you the tools that I'm gonna be preparing myself with. So of course I'm gonna have an oil pan. In this case, uh, this engine only holds about 4.7 quarts, uh, plus you have to add a little bit more for the oil filter. So yeah, at least if you have a container that holds five quart, or, or excuse me, seven quarts or more, um, then you'll be good. Because um, we're gonna be using about five quarts of oil. Uh, we have an oil filter wrench. Um, make sure it's to the size of the oil filter that you're going to be removing. And I have a 3 8 inch dry ratchet set. Simply because I don't remember exactly which size it is. I have three vehicles that I have to deal with. Um, and plus on top of my day job. So, uh, I think it's 14 mils, but we'll find out when we get underneath there. Okay, as we crawl underneath here, we can see the oil pan right here. And on the back side here, you can see your oil pan plug. That's what we're going to unscrew to drain out the oil. So I'm going to place my oil pan underneath there and I'm going to take all my tools out of it so I don't get that oil drenched. And I'm going to place the oil pan right underneath there. And we'll grab my 14 mil. You see how close I was and I was right on the money. So, however, if I would have only came down here with a 14 millimeter socket, Murphy's Law states that it would have been a 15. But uh, I'm happy, I'm under here, I only have to crawl underneath here once. And I'm going to take off. Please excuse me while I roll around on my creeper here. Okay, there we go. So another thing, I have not been driving this vehicle today, so the oil is not hot. If you've been driving your vehicle, the oil is going to be hot, so be cautious. And voila, there you go. Just make sure you got lined up on a windy day, the wind is going to want to kind of blow the oil a little bit, so just be aware. So, I did fail to do one thing. I failed to bring a paper towel with me down here. So uh, we're going to let this drain and we'll be back. Okay, so we're still draining. We're down to a trickle. Where are we? Oh, there we are. And that should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back on, which I had uh, cleaned off, made sure it was in good condition. And I'm just going to put it back in there. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Yep. Grab your ratchet to tighten. And when you tighten it, just tighten it snug. Don't tighten it up too tight. Otherwise, you're going to have fun getting it off. Okay, so we're done uh, draining the oil. And I put my socket and ratchet back in its case. And so now while we're still under here, we're going to kind of roll to the front here. And we're going to look up. And you can see the oil filter right there. And if you luck out, you can stick your hand up in here to loosen it. In this case, it's not so true. I might be able to do it from the top. But since I'm down here and I have my wrench. Sorry, guys, about this uh, camera situation. But I usually have my helper 
mouse with me and today he's not so we're gonna get a wrench on there and we're gonna start turning it hold on a second i'm gonna reposition the camera and i'm just gonna turn it so before i go too far toyota's pretty good and they put a nice little you can't really see it in the camera but uh, it's a little uh channel that the oil can drip down to so i'm just going to move this oil pan underneath here because the uh, oil is going to start dripping down and once it starts doing that i don't want it to go on my driveway and so it's slowly unscrewing and now it's in. certainly hand loose now and so uh, you can see that Right there, the oil's gonna start coming down there and dripping straight down. And typically I just come in from the top and do this, but since I'm videoing, um, there we go. I ended up getting some oil on my driveway. Shame on me. Oh, that's what I have paper towels for. I'm just going to unscrew this the rest of the way. Then I will. My next vehicle is kind of a pain in the butt. Because the way they positioned the oil filter was right above the uh, rack of pitied steering. And they didn't give you any deflectors. So there's my filter. Ooh, it's got a gold tint to it. I must have paid big bucks for that. Anyways. Anything that has gold on it is expensive. <laughs> That's just a rule of thumb. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Alright, this is the new oil filter, which I just took out of the package. It has a fancy hex on the back of it for a wrench. That's pretty cool. I won't use it. I'll still use my oil filter wrench or undo it with my hand when it comes time. Ooh, look at that NASCAR. Yes. These guys don't have to put gold paint on their filters. They just put NASCAR on there. Yeah. All right, so before I put this filter on, I'm going to put a layer of oil around the uh, the lip, this, this rubber lip. And the main reason, hold on one second. Oh, shoot. I just got oil on myself. Darn it. That's what I get. That's what I get for filming. Yep. So the main reason is that was the way my dad taught me. Uh, and also, you don't want that rubber seal to stick to your uh, engine. And so if you put a nice film of oil on it, sometimes I'll use the old oil, or I'll, sometimes I'll use the new oil. Look at that. I got oil on my pants. That's just a shame. And then you just screw it on there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to film this very well screwing it on there. I'll come in from the top for this one. Too bad I don't have a camera watching me because I got this new paper. And I've been very clumsy with it today. I, I, I wheel myself underneath the car and I find myself rolling down the driveway uncontrollably. So I'm a little bit of an amateur when it comes to a creeper. So I'm gonna reach my hand down in here and maybe I can see, oh, there you can, look at that. Look at that shot. And I ran my finger around that nice shiny surface to make sure there wasn't any crud or leftover gasket from the last time. So this is all pretty much done for me by feel right now because I'm coming in from the top. So I can feel, I can feel threads. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna screw clockwise. And you can tell, because it's real easy to screw on. And see that? See how, see how easy this is to screw on? 
I mean, it almost spins by itself. So that's how easy. If it's tighter than that, you're starting to cross thread and stop what you're doing immediately. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw that on by hand. I'm going to clean the surface off, clean my hands off, and I'm going to tighten it by hand. I am not going to tighten it with a wrench. I'm going to tighten it as much as I can by hand. If you feel that you need to use the wrench because you have carpal tunnel syndrome or something like that, don't tighten it too tight. Just snug. All right, that is done. Now we add oil. And where do we add the oil? We add it right here. So on this car, it's kind of weird. So this is just a plastic cover. And if the oil gets down in this lip, it makes kind of a mess. So, and you can see how shallow the intake is for it. So when you're pouring the oil, just be patient and uh, don't over pour it too much because you don't want to get over this lip. It just makes a mess. This is the fun. I have a few funnels I have laying around, but this is the funnel I'm going to be using. It has a kind of a short nozzle. It's wide. It's not skinny, and it just kind of fits down in there. I clean the inside surface off with a paper towel. Uh, sometimes you get little spider webs and stuff in there you don't want you don't want that stuff in your engine and just place it in there and we'll, we'll start pouring it the oil so i have my five quarts of 5w30 oil and uh just make sure you're using the right oil uh, see for gasoline engines in case you forgot <laughs> All right, I'm wasting your time. Let's get this show on the road. So I'm not gonna, oops. That's what I get for looking at the camera. So forget my camera shots right now. I'm just gonna look at my funnel so I can pay attention to what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm not over, over anxious with how I'm pouring the oil in. I'm being conservative. I don't want it to start coming out of there, even though I've been f splashing oil all over the engine already. Shh, yep, so. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll finish this off, all five quarts, and then I'll check the uh, uh, dipstick. And when I do that, I'm actually going to start the engine up first, uh, let the oil get circulated through the engine. Then I'm going to uh, uh, turn it off and I'm going to unblock the back wheel and I'm going to drive the vehicle down into the street to where I'm on a level surface and then I'm going to check the oil level. And that's the order in which I'm going to do it in. All right, that's all five quarts. Okay, so like I said, I am gonna start the engine first. This car doesn't have an oil gauge on it, so uh, I typically run it for a few seconds and uh, let the oil get circulated through the engine. That should be sufficient. And I'm gonna remove the block. And now I'm gonna take it off the ramps and into the street. Okay, now I'm going to check the oil level. Engine is turned off. Uh, the oil dipstick is right here in the front. One moment, I'm going to wipe this clean with a paper towel. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this back into the uh, tube that it came out of. Uh, there's two marks on here. Uh, one on the top, one on the bottom. The uh, fluid level uh, between this mark and this mark is one quart. Uh, we want to be in between these two marks, more towards the top end. Not over and not below. Oh, I hear a mouse coming outside the door in the garage. About ready to say, hey dad, what's going on?
And look at that. It looks like we're good. Let me wipe it one more time. All right, I'm gonna hold it down in there. Let me pull it out. Check the oil level. Looks good. Time to button her up. Okay, so we have the maintenance required light blinking, and that was because you know it's time to change the oil. So since we've already changed the oil, we're gonna clear the maintenance minder. Uh, it's like a reminder to tell you when to change the oil. Uh, I'm gonna do that right now uh, because that's how I know when to change the oil. So I'm gonna get my cameraman mouse to hold the camera so that you can see what I'm doing down in here. All right, so when, oops, before I do that, make sure that your odometer is set to your odometer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this button down when we turn the key switch on. Don't start the engine, but uh, uh, just to turn the key switch on. So mouse, if you could hold the camera like right there. Yeah, that's, that works. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this down, turn the key on, and see how it's counting down? Three, two, one, boing. It's reset. It's reset, that's simple. And I turn my key on, start my engine. No more flashing maintenance light. Make sure you change the oil before you clear it because changing the oil is very important. Thank you and thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to click on the like button and check out Mouse's page too. All right, last but not least, we are going to properly dispose of the oil. Take the oil that I just drained out of my Sienna I'm gonna put it back into the oil container. All right, and I'm going to take this container back to Walmart and they will dispose of it for me.